All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, we have our first main crop fig of 2020, and it looks like it's a beaut. This is uh, a variety here called Dal Oso. It's uh, an early to mid season variety. Um, and actually two weeks ago, we had our first main crop fig off of this tree. So this, this video here is not technically my first, um, but the first couple figs, depends on the variety, but most of my trees, most of my varieties, the first couple figs of the year don't really act right. They don't really ripen properly. So you can't really count, at least I couldn't count, and I wouldn't do a video on that fig that ripened two weeks ago. So that's why we're here today. Uh, we actually ripened that fig sometime in mid-June, which is uh, when I would really expect a lot of the very, very early varieties to ripen. Um, and this is, of course, with the assistance of my greenhouse. So if you're in the Northeast, you're familiar with growing figs in the Northeast um, or in the Philadelphia area, you know that getting a main crop fig, this isn't a Braba, this isn't on last year's wood, this is on the new growth. Um, you know that getting a fruit around this time of the year, today is July 3rd, uh, is just insane. It's, um, it's very difficult to do, it's impossible to do, unless you have some sort of greenhouse. And that's really what I aim to do, I'm gonna aim to do this in the future, is to get a number of these potted trees uh, we're going to focus on putting more of the early varieties in the greenhouse. Normally, I would put some of the very late varieties, get them a head start um, because they need it, right? The very late varieties without some sort of assistance, um, some of them just may not ripen here in time. So I need to give them as much heat earlier in the season that I can. However, if I'm getting fruits that are ripening in like middle of June, early July, or really anytime around July or early August, that's really the best time of the year to be ripening figs in my particular location. And I've told you guys this so many times now, is that figs are very subjected to the weather. They vary significantly. So if you have a really bad day, you're having great weather, you're gonna have great figs. If you're having bad weather, you're gonna have bad figs. And that's when the fig is actually ripening. So when the fig actually turns, when it's green and hard and it starts to swell, it starts to get larger and turn color. And then maybe let's say five to 10 days later, that particular fig is ripe. Within that five to 10 day window, what was the weather like? Uh, how much soil moisture did you have? Did you water recently? All those things greatly impact the quality of the fruit. And it's not just the weather, it's also the variety. The variety widely varies, not just day to day, but year to year. It changes so significantly, there's not a whole lot of consistency. If I were to ripen, let's say a nectarine, I have some nectarines ripening right now in the front of the house. If I get some nectarines, they're going to be pretty darn close in bricks and quality uh, right after each other. I'm not going to have much variability. I'm going to have maybe a little bit of difference in color, depending on how much sunlight they got. But overall, they're going to taste relatively the same. If I were to have here in the next couple of days, or maybe let's say a week ago, if I were, were to have just downpours of rain, I were to have a number of storms that come in here, that would greatly affect the quality of my fruits. So therefore, I've always said to you guys, and I'll say it forever, basically, is that uh, you have to get your figs to ripen at the height of your season. What is the height of your season? Usually, that's the warmest time of the year and also the driest time of the year. So if you guys, maybe it could also be too warm, so you wanna keep things around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's the limit, right? If it gets a little bit over 90, maybe 95, 100, 110, the quality can drop just a bit. Uh, however, things can spoil at that point. However, um, I would rather have temperatures above 90 than below 90. Um, 
that's my personal preference because I have not only tasted figs here that have ripened at the most optimal time of my year, which is now. July is the driest and the warmest time of my year of my climate on average. So I've also tasted figs though that were grown in California that were not, we're talking about commercial figs that were Black Mission or Panache or Brown Turkey that I bought at Whole Foods. These are figs that actually people who are growing these very special varieties have tree ripened them and have brought them to New York where I met them and we got to taste fruits. That was at the Long Island Fig Festival, I think of 2017 or 2018. We did a video on that where my friend Doug had brought and spoiled us, literally had spoiled us uh, with these spectacular tasting figs because the difference between, as I've mentioned, growing them at the wrong time of the year or specifically growing them in an inoptimal climate is just massive. A fig that is grown in California, that's caprified, that's grown in a very dry, warm place. It doesn't matter if it's California or not. If it's caprified, if it's grown in a very dry and very warm place around 90 degrees, you're going to have the best fruit quality that you can get. There's just no competition. Here in Philadelphia, we do not get that quality. And it's very difficult to achieve that without ripening them in July or in August or maybe in mid-June or late June without some sort of covering, without some sort of greenhouse, without plastic, maybe even protecting the figs from the rain. Uh, having the proper and perfect soil moisture is absolutely critical to the quality of these fruits. So if you're not um, a believer just yet in that, I strongly suggest that you get yourself some of those figs that I mentioned. You ripen them at the right time. Maybe you go and visit California and pick some figs. You go to some Mediterranean climate, you pick some figs, and you're gonna be blown away by the difference in quality that can be achieved in those locations versus somebody that lives, let's say in Florida or Pennsylvania or even Oregon, you know, um, the difference is clear. So for me, um, I am extremely happy and that's why I have gone through this long spiel <laughs> was to give you guys the full picture to, den to then tell you that I am extremely excited for this particular fig. Um, I don't think it's going to be the tastiest fig I eat all year, believe it or not. Um, it's not the most perfectly ripe. This tree has been going through some, tr some troubles here. Actually, some of the fruits on the tree may even drop off. Uh, the tree is not liking life right now. <laughs> it's a bit stressed. We took it out of the greenhouse, and um, when we took it out of the greenhouse, it took a beating. It was one of the first trees I took out by the way. It was just too cold. It was very windy. Uh, there was actually some sunburn on the leaves as well. So the tree has been rapidly trying to recover in addition to holding on to about 10 or so fruits. I let the fruits stay on the tree because I really wanted them to ripen at this time of the year. Um, and of course, I'm going to get rewarded for that. Um, after we pick this particular fig, it's actually not perfect. And I probably could wait and I should wait. Uh, now I'm really debating. <laughs> I'm really debating whether or not I should pick this guy. And uh, the reason it's not ready is that you can tell by the neck. If the neck is really soft, it's ready. If it's not really soft, uh, you should wait. And uh, it's kind of a judgment thing, right? I would uh, Ideally, I would let your figs ripen for as long as possible. Uh, let them hang on the tree and then pick them at different times, different dates. Uh, see how long you can push it for. See how long uh, you can push it for and then evaluate at what stage do you like it the most. I like to count, uh, I like to have some days that I like to count. So after the fig swells, it starts to swell as an example. What does that mean? Well, when the fig is green and hard, um, it then starts to swell and turn color. And uh, you know, it turns color. 
excuse me guys while I adjust this. It turns color, it gets larger, and then uh, from this green state here, as an example, it then starts to turn into this. So I count from the number of days from this to the number of days to this, and that is the amount of days that I like to pick my figs. And I'll know that based on the variety, it depends, but I'll know that um, for the future. And I'll be able to count at least in my head, we don't necessarily have to keep perfect track of this, but we like to count. Um, that way we know we're picking this at the most optimal time of the year. I will mention that there is some cracking and you guys can really make that out, I'm sure, on the camera. There's some cracking and that, people would argue, is a sign of the fig being ripe and it's not. It is not a sign of the fig being ripe. The most, the best sign of a fig being ripe is the neck. If the neck is soft, because the fig ripens, guys, um, it ripens from the bottom up. So if the neck is soft, you know the rest of the fig is, is ripe. So the neck has to be perfect before you can pick this thing. Um, additionally, the cracking here, the only reason that this is showing up is one, it has a lot to do with the environment, the climate, uh, if you have a lot of uh, temperature swings in your climate, you can see a lot more cracking. So if it gets really warm during the day and then gets very cool at night, you can see this a lot more often. Uh, but mainly this is because I have been feeding this particular tree so much. I have been uh, giving this tree, because it was in such a bad state, I really decided to feed the tree a lot of nitrogen to get it back to a more respectable uh, state so I could get more leaves, more photosynthesis, the carbohydrates produced through these leaves then gets put into the fruits and I have a, therefore a higher bricks. So, um, you know, I decided to weigh the pros and the cons here, but because I have given the tree so much nitrogen, it now has these cracks. While they may be beautiful, this actually is a detriment to the quality of the fruit and for how long the fig can hang on the tree. The longer the fig hangs on the tree, the sweeter and usually the more tastier it becomes up until a point where it starts to spoil, right? So what contributes to spoiling is actually the cracks in the skin, maybe a larger eye, exposing the interior of the fig to the elements, to the climate. So uh, for me, it's not something I ever want to do. And I normally will stop my feeding um, after I've given the tree enough growth to then put out a good amount of leaves to then be able to support and put enough energy, enough carbohydrates into these fruits. And uh, if I do that, that's all I need to do. I don't need to be feeding the tree more than that because I value the fruit quality. I don't value a giant tree. And that's something I think people don't necessarily understand. So I think what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to wait to pick this particular fig because I don't think it's perfectly ripe. And um, this is a nice little view into what kind of restraint <laughs> that you guys need to have, okay? You need to have <laughs> some sort of restraint and patience when it comes to picking fruits, particularly with figs. Every single day that this particular fruit, all the figs, ripen on the tree is a dramatic difference. From the day prior to the next day is a very different fruit. And if I were to open this up, I know that it would be pretty good. We have the right weather here. Um, it's the right time of the year, but I know for a fact that it's not going to be the perfect quality that I want in a fig. So I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna use restraint, I'm gonna edit this video, we're gonna bring you guys back and we're gonna open this up and we're gonna look at the fig, talk about the flavor, talk about the interior of the fig, uh, and then we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna all be happy. I think you guys will be more satisfied that way. Rather if I just ate this off camera and uh, didn't explain anything about it. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this one. I hope you guys are, are kind of getting that, that fig bug. Uh, you're obviously seeing my enthusiasm, my inspiration here um, 
four figs and uh, you're kind of getting the understanding of this whole thing now. It really is a, a, a ridiculously worthwhile fruit to grow um, for so many reasons. And uh, I think the variability in the fruit itself is one of the most biggest reasons to start, you know, even just adding different varieties to your collection rather than just having one fig that you're happy with. Uh, there's a lot of genetic diversity out there and there's a lot of variability, as I mentioned, variety to variety, climate to climate, day to day. So, um, yeah, thank you guys here so much for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, uh, please hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned. I think I, instead of editing this video, I'm going to put out a, a separate video on the actual tasting of this particular fruit. And um, we'll come at you guys with that one. So thank you guys. Stay tuned for that. Um, and also, guys, check out our blog if you're interested, figboss.com. We have a lot of fig-related information there. We'll see everybody soon. Take care, guys.